I can hear a plane right now. Yeah. Ah. I don't even know where I am in the shot here. Let's just get this thing out of the way. Let's get out of the way. Slide. Hi, everybody. It's me, Ned, and baby Ned. Oh. The Neds. Yeah. Um, oh, I can't reach it. I dropped it over here. Ah. Um, this is one of my almost like all-time favorite wines. Um, Pierre Olivier Bonhomme Touraine Sauvignon Blanc. It's 100% Sauvignon Blanc from Touraine. Pierre Olivier Bonhomme uh, started out making wine with uh, Thierry Pouzelot of um, Claude de Toubouf, a really, really legendary producer in Cheverny, Corse Cheverny. I don't know if he has lines in Corse Cheverny too. Cheverny producer. Um, and for generations, the Pouzelots have like collected old vines, like varieties that were you know, getting disallowed from the Appalachian, things that were going out of, out of fashion. And uh, anyway, so Thierry and his brother were running the winery and there were a couple of really bad vintages, like just with frost, hail, stuff like that, that wiped them out. And so in order to have more wine or enough wine to sell, uh, Thierry started a separate sort of little winery and negociant label. Um, and, uh, but as it, it took off sort of more than he expected. And so he needed help. And you remember this guy, Pierre Olivier Bonhomme, who, um, had done a bunch of like stodges or like, like work, like summers, I think, or harvests at, um, uh, Claude de Toubouf. So got in touch with him and, uh, I think, oh, sleepy baby. I think Piero had dropped out of high school at that point. And, um, anyway, they reconnected and brought him on as like a partner in this winery, uh, with the, because Thierry was, a, you know, sort of aware that at some point his brother was going to retire and he was going to have to go back and take over all the winemaking duties and stuff at, um, Claude de Toubouf. So anyway, so then eventually Pierre Olivier Bonhomme took over all the winemaking here, but continued making, you know, the same wines in, to a uh, larger part, in the same way that Thierry Pouzelot. And they still work together and they're friends and collaborate, coordinate, whatnot. Um, so this is later harvested because he's not capitalizing, so has to get the grapes really fully ripe. Slightly later harvested Sauvignon Blanc with nothing added, no additives, no, ugh, whatever. Um, no filtration, low sulfur. It smells tropical. It makes me think of like mango and guava because mango can be spicy. It smells tropical, but it also sp smells spicy at the same time. It's so rich on the palate. There's pineapple. There's like peach, really ripe pear. There's this fantastic salinity though to it as well. This salty like back of the mid palate. And then that spice that Sauvignon Blanc can have, like, like aromatic heat, like the heat that you get from like spicy basil or something like that. Um, it's really, really delicious. Like that juxtaposition of really ripe tropical fruit, um, the salt that then comes in and backs it up. It has really bright, crisp acidity. Um, but then that spiciness, like that's what makes it really sexy to me. Mm. Yeah. Uh, and so this anyway, 2018 from what I'm tasting, 2018 is fantastic. It's one of the best vintages or one of my favorite, I should say, favorite vintages. I think that I've had of this wine, it sort of blends all the different things that I love about it really well. The richness, the texture that it's got, the tropical fruit, the lushness. It's a really, really like sexy, big, giving Sauvignon Blanc that's still really racy and like has great structure and definition. And it looks like I'm hitting the end of this. So go look for it. I just got a palette of this and the red counterpart. Tell Kel there about 
$20 retail. They're amazing and fantastic. Go buy them. I love them. Gotta go. Gotta get dinner for the baby.